might be shocked to hear that old tires can take up to 500 years to break down. Even crazier, there are millions of tires just lying around polluting the planet. So the big question is, can these old rollers be recycled into something useful? And are tire material even recyclable? The problem with old tires. Ever seen a giant mountain of old tires just chilling in the middle of nowhere? Yeah, it's not just some junkyard secret. It's a real problem. When tires get old and bald, they don't just vanish. Most of the time they're tossed aside, left to rot, or dumped where they shouldn't be. Every single year, over 1 billion tires wear out around the world. That's a whole lot of rubber just sitting around doing absolutely nothing but causing trouble. And in case you didn't know, tires don't break down like leftover food. They take hundreds of years to even start falling apart. And while they're sitting there, they can trap water, become mosquito hotels, or randomly catch fire. And when a tire catches fire, oh boy, it turns into a smoke monster that's toxic and super hard to stop. That's why just tossing tires in landfills is such a bad move for the planet. But don't worry, there's a way to fix it. Recycling. Yep, those ugly old tires can actually be turned into cool stuff, like roads, shoes, or even furniture. But how does this process even happen? Well, believe it or not, it all starts when you take them to a recycling center. But before I tell you what happens next, subscribe to my channel if you like to keep learning how things are made from scratch. What are tires even made of? Now to really understand how tires can be recycled, we have to start with the basics. What's a tire actually made of? Rubber, right? Well, kind of. Tires are like giant rubber cakes with lots of layers inside. They've got natural rubber, synthetic rubber, steel wires, polyester, carbon black, and a bunch of chemicals that help them survive rough roads, rain, heat, and even snow. Some tires even have Kevlar. Yeah, the same stuff they use in bulletproof vests. So you're basically riding on battle-ready donuts every time you drive. Pretty cool, right? But all these mixed-up materials make tires super hard to recycle. You can't just melt them down like plastic or toss them in your backyard compost. Recycling tires is tricky, and I'll tell you all about it next. The first step, collection and sorting. So let's say you just changed your tires because they were wobbling like jelly on a hot day. What happens next? Well, the very first step in recycling them is collecting them. And no, it's not some magical tire fairy flying around at night. It's regular folks like trucks picking them up from all kinds of places like auto repair shops, gas stations, tire stores, and junkyards. Ever seen a big mountain of old tires behind a shop? That's where it starts. From there, these tires get loaded up and sent off to a recycling center. But they don't all get treated the same. Once they arrive, the sorting begins. It's like a tire audition. Some tires still have a little life left in them. Maybe they're just a little worn and not totally bald. These ones might get retreaded. That means someone slaps on a fresh layer of rubber, smooths it out, and guess what? That tire gets a second chance at life. It goes back on the road like nothing ever happened. Now let's talk about the rejects. The truly worn out, crusty, hopeless ones. The kind that look like they've been through a war. These are done. No retread, no mercy. They get tossed in a different pile where they wait for their trip to the shredder. And before we go further, just know this part isn't just about tossing tires around like it's a game. Sorting is super important because it decides what kind of future each tire gets. Some will be reused, some will become new products, and some will literally be destroyed and reborn as something totally different. Also, not all tires are made equal. Car tires, truck tires, tractor tires, airplane tires, they all come in different shapes, sizes, and materials. Some tires have more steel inside, some have special layers that need to be handled differently. That's why sorting helps keep the whole process smooth and safe. Mixing the wrong kinds of tires can mess up the machines later and cause all kinds of delays. And just in case you're wondering what happens if nobody picks up old tires, well, that's when things get messy. People sometimes dump them in rivers, forests, or empty lots. Illegal dumping isn't just gross, it's dangerous. It pollutes the environment, attracts pests, and costs cities a ton of money to clean up. That's why proper collection is not just smart, it's necessary. So now you know, 
Every recycled tire starts its journey as a total reject before it gets picked up, sorted out, and either gets a second chance or gets prepped for the next big step. And that next step? Oh, it's about to get loud and messy. Welcome to the Shred Zone. Step two, shredding time. All right, now that the sorting crew's done their job, it's time to bring in the muscle. This part of the process is loud, wild, and honestly, kind of fun to watch. We're talking about shredding. Think of it like a giant blender, but instead of fruit, it chews up tires for breakfast. Big tires, small tires, thick tires, doesn't matter. These machines don't play around. Before the rubber can get chopped to bits, we've got to deal with the steel. Because as I mentioned before, tires have steel wires buried inside them, especially in the sidewalls and the bead, which is the part that hugs the rim. So as you can see, tires aren't just rubber circles. The steel adds strength and keeps them from flying off the rim when you hit a pothole. But when it comes to shredding, that same steel becomes a huge problem. It can mess up the blades, jam the machines, or just slow everything down. So first they toss the tires into a special machine that pulls out the steel. It's kind of like a magnet that sucks up the metal parts and spits out cleaner rubber. And don't worry, that steel doesn't go to waste. It's sent off to be recycled too. Turned into things like construction material or even new tools. Win-win. Once the metal's out, the rubber gets pushed into the shredder. And let me tell you, this thing is an absolute beast. The blades are big, sharp, and powerful enough to eat a tire like it's a soft pancake. It starts by breaking the tire into big chunks. Then those chunks go through again and again, getting smaller each time. Eventually what you're left with looks like thick rubber chips or little nuggets. That stuff's called tire-derived aggregate. Fancy name, but basically it means shredded up tire bits. And here's the cool part. Those chunky rubber chips aren't just trash. They're actually useful, as a lot of them get used in construction projects. Ever wonder what's under some highways or around train tracks? Sometimes it's tire chips. They help with drainage, reduce flooding, and can even be used to hold up big buildings without sinking to the ground. Not bad for a pile of old tires, right? Some of those rubber pieces get used in making sports fields too. You know that soft black stuff under fake grass that bounces when you run on it? Yep, that's tire crumb. Same with the rubber floors in some gyms and playgrounds, all made from shredding tires. And we're still not done because after shredding, some places take it even further by grinding and cleaning. We're going full factory mode next. Stick around. Step three, grinding and cleaning. Next, the rubber chips get ground down even more until they look like little black sprinkles. This powdery stuff is called crumb rubber. Crumb rubber is like magic dust. It can mix it into all kinds of things. Want a bouncy track for running? Add crumb rubber. Want a quiet road? Add crumb rubber. Want soft floors for kids to play on? Yep, add crumb rubber. Before it gets used, the rubber dust has to be cleaned. It goes through machines that remove any leftover metal or fiber. What's left is clean, soft rubber that's ready for action. So now you've got clean crumb rubber, but what do you do with it? Well, you won't believe how many places this stuff ends up. One big use is in building roads. The rubber gets mixed with asphalt to make something called rubberized asphalt. It lasts longer, makes less noise when cars drive on it, and handles heat like a champ. Another cool use? Playgrounds. That squishy, colorful floor under the swings? Probably made from old tires. It helps kids bounce instead of break when they fall. Even sports fields use tire rubber. Those little black bits you see on turf fields? Old tires. Soccer players slide all over them every day. But wait, there's more. People also use recycled tires for shoe soles, mats, carpet padding, gym floors, and even furniture. There's really no limit when it comes to this stuff. Now I know you're wondering if old tires can be used too. Actually, yes. Not every tire has to be shredded to be useful. Some places use whole tires for big construction projects. In some cases, they're stacked up to build walls or barriers. They've even been used to help stop erosion on hillsides. People build artificial reefs in the ocean using tires too. Fish love them, even though humans think they're ugly. And let's not forget tire swings. Classic, simple, and fun. Who knew trash could be so useful? The problem with burning tires. 
Alright, let's talk about something that sounds smart at first but ends up being a complete disaster. Burning tires. Yep, some people actually think it's a great idea to set old tires on fire to get energy out of them. Why? Because tires are made with stuff that burns really well. They've got oils, rubber, and synthetic materials that hold a lot of energy. Basically, they're like little fuel cakes. Sounds efficient, right? Well, not so fast. When you burn a tire, you don't just get heat. You also get a whole cocktail of nasty stuff floating into the air. We're talking black smoke, toxic gases, cancer-causing chemicals, and pollution that hangs around and messes with the air, the soil, and the water. Trust me, breathing that smoke is not great for your lungs. It's not great for animals either. It's like inviting a chemical factory to crash in your neighborhood. Now, to be fair, some fancy factories use high-tech burners that try to make it cleaner. But even those still leave behind toxic ash and sticky waste. So it's not exactly eco-friendly. So what should you do instead? Easy. When your tires are done, ask your tire shop if they recycle. Most places will take them back. Got old tires lying around your yard? Don't burn them. Don't ditch them in a field. Take them to a recycling center or get creative. Turn a tire into a swing or a flower pot. Just don't make the planet pay for your trash. Now that you know how tires are recycled and what they're made of, don't forget to do your part. Subscribe to the channel, share this video, tell a friend, and next time you see an old tire, imagine all the cool things it could become instead of treating it like trash.